Hi folks, I'm Tony Norris and here we're seated on the balcony of the Weatherford Hotel and it's a summer afternoon. We're in monsoon season. The clouds are building up over the San Francisco peaks behind me and I'm reminded of a story of something that took place here in Flagstaff more than a hundred years ago. There was a young woman living in Flagstaff. Her name was Maria. And Maria was the most beautiful woman in Flagstaff, and she knew it, too. She would tell her abuelita, her grandmother, she would say, Abuelita, when I marry, I want to marry the most handsome cowboy in Arizona. He'll have hair as black as a raven's wing. He'll have mustaches that come out and curve up on the end. And her, her grandmother would say, Maria, don't worry about whether you marry the most handsome cowboy. Look for a man that will be a good provider for you, a good husband and a good father to your children. But one day, Maria was in downtown Flagstaff when a young cowboy rode up on a horse and he was the most handsome cowboy you had ever seen. He had hair as black as a raven's wing. He had mustaches that came down and curled up on the end. And you may find this hard to believe, but that young cowboy was even better looking than I am. When the young cowboy saw Maria, his heart went ba bump. It was love at first sight. He began to court Maria. He would show up at her house and he would have a bouquet of flowers for her. Or maybe some hard candy that he had bought at the store. And he and Maria were married. And for several years they were very happy. Maria's parents were quite wealthy and they built as a wedding gift for the young couple a beautiful house which stood right on the banks of the Rio de Flag right about where the public library stands today do you all know where the library is yeah okay that's where the house stood everything went great for a couple of years Maria and her husband had two beautiful little children but Maria's husband began to go back to his old ways. He began to ride off to Winslow and Holbrook, and he'd be drinking and gambling and be gone for weeks. And, and, and finally the time came that Maria's husband stayed away. He didn't come home anymore. And Maria was all alone in the big house with her two little children. And one day, during the monsoon season, a day like today, she was out in the yard and she was looking up toward the peaks and she saw the clouds stacking up over the peaks and she knew that soon it was going to rain hard. And she looked off toward town and she saw a buggy coming. And as the buggy got closer, she could see her husband sitting on the seat of the buggy and seated beside him was another woman. A woman that had red hair piled on top of her head and she was wearing too much makeup. And the buggy grew closer and closer. Boom, ba boom, 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 boom. The thunder crashed and the lightning flashed and it began to rain hard. And Maria knew that soon the water would rise in the Rio de Flag. Her husband pulled up in the buggy. He said, I don't want to talk to you. I'm here to see my children. He went into the house and it began to rain. Maria stood there in the rain and she was just wet to the skin. Her husband came out of the house, got in the buggy, and rode away with that other woman. Something in Maria just snapped and she went crazy. Crazy with anger and and hurt and jealousy of her own children because her husband came to see the children but not her and Maria did a horrible thing she took her two little children and she threw them into the flood waters of the Rio de Flag and they were swept away when she realized what she had done she began running along the banks crying me see horse me see horse my children but it was too late they were drowned in the creek as she was running along, she tripped and fell and hit her head on a big white rock and she was killed instantly. The priest said that the children should be buried in the Campo Santo, the holy ground at the cemetery. But Maria could not be buried in holy ground because she killed her children and took her own life. And so she was buried right there where she died by the creek. 
in days after that people used to say that sometimes at night they would see a figure all dressed in white walking through the woods at night crying me see horse me see horse and they begin to call her la llorona the crying woman one day there were a bunch of children playing along the creek and the sun was starting to go down and they heard a sound supper time you kids come home all across Flagstaff mothers were calling their children to come home to supper and one by one the children all left to go home to supper except for one kid he was kind of a tough kid I think maybe his name was Jordan well Jordan said no I'm gonna stay here I think I'm gonna sit on this white rock and watch the full moon rise tonight and that's just what he did as he sat there watching the full moon rise behind the rock he saw a figure coming toward him through the trees a figure all dressed in white a figure who began to cry me see horse me see horse closer and closer it was la llorona then she saw the little boy and she reached out both her arms she said me hijo my son the little boy couldn't move a muscle he was paralyzed la llorona reached out and grabbed him by the shoulders he couldn't move a muscle he was paralyzed just then the church bells began to ring and the little boy remembered a prayer that his grandfather had taught him he began to pray like he had never prayed before in his life and when he began to pray La Llorona released him and he jumped up and he ran for home he was so glad to see the light shining from the kitchen door he hit the door the door flew open his mother said where have you been supper's been on the table for 20 minutes he said mama la llorona she said don't you tell me your stories <gasps> but then she saw on his shirt in blood the fingerprints where la llorona had held him now they still say <laughs> that when the moon is full you may hear a sound and at first you'll think it's just the wind in the tops of the pine trees but if you listen closely you'll hear me see horse me see horse